What's the problem here? Yeah, okay, that's fan motors toast. I got one on the truck, so let's get it changed out. I gotta turn this thing off. I'm working at today. It used to have a, well, actually this old unit still works. It's electric on the end of this old cargo container and they use it to store the milk in. And we had put an electric unit in underneath and then piped it up to a evaporator coil inside. You'll see the line set right here. Um, and that's the unit right there. The condenser fan motor died. So I'm gonna get that changed out and then get her cleaned up and ready to rock and roll. So, uh, let me get under there. Okay, Milwaukee makes this angle head adapter for the impact that gets the two bottom bolts off of the uh, condenser fan motor housing bracket. Real nifty, tip of the day. All right, we'll get this mega tidied up here. Oh, we got the fan blade out. YouTube. Gonna go on a call for a customer. It's opening up another location, but they they had a freezer. They said some other company couldn't find the leak in. And they said they made three trips on this box or it's a reach in. So let's go see if we can find where the leak's at and fix it for them. I don't have my voice today. My voice left me, so it's all always fun. So this is a freezer, it just got moved. What are we working on here? T49F. Yeah. All right. There it is. Okay, got the nitrogen, I pumped it up. Yeah, I pumped it up high, like I always do to find leaks. Peeled this insulation off the suction line and I found this, old Mr. Twisty here. And there's your leak. Three trips, another company, three trips. And they lost all kinds of product at their other place. Didn't even get to use it. And there's your problem right there. It's gonna be a bugger to fix. I have to take that valve off and start from scratch. See if I can sweat a piece up into the valve after I sweat the stub out. I'll probably cut the pipe back, unbolt the valve, and then uh, start from there. Might as well give it a try. If it doesn't work out, I'll just purchase a new valve for it and then start over and repipe it. It's about all you can do. Okay, so that was our leak right there. All you had to do is take the insulation back. It's not magic insulation. We'll go ahead and we'll cut this right here. Then we'll take this off and see what we can do here. I got the tubing cutter right here. Okay, there it is. I got the valve out. You can see where the crack was inside there. That's it. I'm going to sweat that off of there and then start over with a new piece of half inch. It's just two half inch bolts holds that on there to the compressor, which is over there. And let's see if we can fix this up. Back out here. They're using, and I'm gonna get a little C clamp and clamp that on there, and then I can. I'm gonna try and sweat that off of there. We'll see how that goes. Right, so here's where I'm at. I sweated that piece out. I bent up this piece. It's a little bit longer, but that's what I want. And clean this up, and then reattach. And you see the crack in there pretty good. There it is. See the crack in there? Three trips. Three trip crack. Okay, so that's how it came out. We got our dryer changed out there. Brought our nitro. Not the best looking well, but it is holding out. Soap bubbles on it right now. That's my coupling. My gasket. That's not so that's not bubbling right there. It's just residual soap off the compressor body. So you've seen in my videos before where I said put the caps back on when you pull a vacuum. Even That's as tight as you can get that packing. So when you pull a vacuum, you got to put your caps on your service valves. Just a heads up. All right. This one is at 200 PSI. Now we're going to watch it for a bit, and then we'll, we'll see about uh, pulling a vacuum on this thing. 
I checked the coil up there too. There's no leaks in the coil section. It's good. So we're ready to pull a vacuum. See the hoses on the vacuum. Okay, so I just started it up. And what you'll notice with freezers when they first start up is so your pressures will be goofy because we're not running the vap fans and we also have a crankcase pressure regulator back there. So when it comes out of defrost, we don't max out the amps on our compressor. So I got the factory charge weighed in, that's what's happening. Our three wire clicks on is not cold enough yet. Our fan delay to bring the fans on, so that's where we're at. But we're getting good and cold back there. I see some frost melting off my fingers. Oh, yeah, we're getting there really close. There's no load on our compressor right now. Fans just kicked on. <clears throat> we'll watch our, our pressures come up. Very slowly. See, it'll, it'll, the fans will run and then they'll stop. And they'll come back on. It clicks on heats and cools in there, the bimetal. That's what you just saw right there. So you gotta be patient and let it run. We'll check it back in, in a few minutes here. Okay, so we're dropping down now. You see our pressures, fans have come on, and with the crankcase pressure regulator back there, that's what we're looking like here. factory charge of 17 ounces so I'm good with that she's back in action and uh, dropping down quite nicely well, started out. 